Hello, Game Talk for Gamers. We are sitting here. It's myself and Ryan Christian. We've got the Ultramarines Codex. We've got the Space Marine Codex. We have the White Scars Codex. We have absolutely all of them. And I'm just going to change that slightly. And I am going to be breaking them down with Ryan Christian right now, giving you the top secrets. If you want to see what's inside these Codex books, don't miss out and grab some water. God, Deidre, it's hot yeah. there. Hot in Texas. Mm. Especially with this Codex book. This is what's hot. If you've got questions, if you want to know what's inside any of these three books, now is the time to ask. You can pump it up in the content, uh, sorry, in the comments, and we'll be going through them and sharing them. First things first, um, the way it works, in case you haven't seen the Games Workshop updates, is there is a Space Marine Codex book. This book has the summary of all of the core, uh, the core chapters. Um, that Codex is straight fire. Ryan, it really is straight fire. This is incredible. They have leveled up Space Marines. Space Marines are back, and they're going to kick ass. Um, and what's really cool is you've got like the chapter tactics for each of the Marines are in this book and they are not in this book. Correct. So the Ultramarines, you need this book and this book. You can't get away with just this book, even if you only wanted some of the models in it. You do need both um, because of all the really cool rules they've got in there. Um, once again, uh, do me a favor when you start watching, give us a hello just so we know who's watching, so we know who's tuning in. Um, I, I kind of want to go through just uh, just briefly some of the uh, the overview of the book. Obviously, you've got all your fluff. What I love about this one compared to the others is they do a lot of emphasis on successor chapters. We've got the Hammers of Dawn, the Subjugators, which is like Green Imperial Fist, really cool. Sons of the Phoenix, you know, fooling anyone, we know they're the Emperor's children. Morning, James Hutchinson, how you doing, bud? Um, there's a lot about the White Scars, um, and then you've got all the successor chapters for the White Scars. Um, it's really important we talk about the successor chapters in this because... Um, the successors have a whole section where you can design your own successor chapter. What's up, Pat Galette? It's good to see you, man. Um, Jason Collins, hey, from Sydney, Australia. I love Sydney. It's such a good place. You guys have the Lint Coffee Shop. It's yeah. like a, a chocolate coffee shop. It's, it's really beautiful cool. out there. Yeah, it's great. So um, uh, I'm going to whiz through this and talk about like some of the big changes because uh, there's a hell of a lot. First of all, um, there's this new rule called the Angels of Death. And the Angels of Death is uh, essentially summarizing all the new rules they used to have. Um, so let's, uh, let's have a look at this. The first one, obviously, they've got and they shall know no fear. That's the same rule as before. Uh, when your morale test is taken, you can re-roll the dice. So that's standard. We know that. Um, uh, James Hutch says, for Space Wolves, will I need three books then? It's hard to say. They haven't announced it yet. I have a funny feeling the Space Wolves will get their own... Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it'll be a supplement. I suspect they'll get their own one of these, their own core okay. book. And if they're really crazy, they might create supplements for it. Who knows? Because you've got the success chapters and Space Wolves might be different. Who knows what they'll do? But the Space Wolves are not in here at all. There's nothing about them. So I suspect we'll have uh, uh, their own book. You may need this one as well, but I doubt it. Knowing GW, I, I don't think they'll do that because yeah. they'll want to limit what Space Wolves can have. So I think you'll just get your own book and maybe there'll be a, a sub book that goes with it. Um, the next rule in Angel Death is Bolt to Discipline. It's official. Um, you know, this is the one that enables rapid fire weapons to fire uh, at full range if you stay still, um, or uh, if it's infantry, or if it's a Terminator, Biker, Centurion, or Dreadnought, um, then it can be at any range. So that's huge. Uh, they officially got rid of the vehicles for that. And then Shock Assault, which is the, the new rule that they announced the other day. Um, uh, Ian says, I'm new to it. Does this link with Primaris or not? Primaris Marines are in this book. Hardcore. In fact, Primaris are back in a big way. They are... They are, they, you know, they're not getting rid of tactical marines, but a lot of people are going to be moving over to Primaris. They're just better. Um, and then the uh, shock assault is when a unit uh, charges, is charged, or does a heroic intervention, they get plus one attack to every model in the unit. That's crazy good. Um, when you're thinking of things like Reavers, or you're thinking of even your Primaris marines, like... That is a lot of attacks because Primaris Marines have two attacks as standard. Yeah. So, like, if you've got a Primaris Marine squad, the sergeant has three attacks with a power fist. If you give him a power fist, when he charges or is charged, he has four power fist attacks. That's crazy. Crazy good. Um, and then you've got the combat doctrines. Now, the way these work um, is all Space Marines, um, except Servitors and Unaligned, um, at the start of the game have the Devastator Doctrine. And the Devastator Doctrine essentially says that heavy weapons and grenades have an improved AP of 1. So what that means is on the first turn of the game, your LAS cannons are AP minus 4. Um, and then, uh, uh, Francesco says, what about the new Incursor That's unit? Right. We're going to go yeah, for it. We'll We're going through it, so watch this. Um, and then, uh, at the start of any battle round, so not at the start of your turn, but the battle round, uh, you can choose to change the Tactical Doctrine if you want, but you must have already had one turn in the Devastator Doctrine in order, in order to do that. 
And then it's your rapid fire and assault weapons get uh, an improvement of minus one to AP. So now your flamethrowers and your melter guns, AP minus five melter guns, what? It's crazy. Um, and your rapid fire bolt guns, your bolt guns now AP minus one from, net, from second turn onwards. And then after that, once you have already done that, then in your next turn in the assault phase, uh, so this will be your third battle round, um, you can make it so pistol and melee weapons, but you lose the rapid fire. So I suspect what we see a lot of people doing is turn one, heavy weapon fire, turn two, switch to rapid fire, and they'll probably sit on rapid fire until mm -hmm. towards the end of the game when things you get said up really tight. flamers can get a mi an extra minus one. Day. Yeah, so you've got flamers AP minus one. Yeah, that's never right. happened before. Imagine even just like on Overwatch, auto hit, AP minus one. Like Yeah, it's brutal. Ugh. Absolutely brutal. Um, and so they're the combat doctrines. And some of the armies, like the Ultramarines, get other benefits when you, uh, when you activate the combat doctrines. Now, once we get into the book, it's kind of what you see. They've kind of like added the FAQ to everything, which is really, really cool, right? So you've got the Primaris Captain, Captain in Gravis Armor. That's about the same. There's nothing too much changed there. Um, there are some big changes when it comes to rerolls. We're going to talk about this um, a bit later on, so don't miss out. You've got to stay tuned, guys. We've got the Captain in Phobos Armor. Um, with the, you know, that, that new guy, he's had a 20-point drop. He's gone from 119 down to 99. So that's a huge change for those of you guys that got Shadow Spear. Um, then, of course, you get your Captain and Terminator armor, Captain Cataphracti army, Captain, Captain on bike, Lieutenants. We all love Lieutenants. Primaris Lieutenants. Um, then we've got the Librarian, the Lieutenant in Phobos armor, Primaris Librarian, Primaris Chaplain. Chaplains are completely different. They have changed the way they work. They no longer reroll all failed hits in close combat. Now they know the Litany of Hate and one litany from the litanies of battle. They work a lot more like a Dark Apostle. Um, at the start of the battle round, this model can recite one litany it knows that is not already being recited by another friendly model that battle round. Roll a d6. On a three up, the, uh, the recited litany is inspiring and takes effect. So the litany of hate is reroll hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons uh, rather than six inches. So that's the rule that we all know and love, but there are other litanies that you can pick and choose. Also, the Primaris Chaplain is a spiritual leader, so friendly units can use this model's leadership um, instead of their own. A uh, friendly chapter, uh, so same chapter units. Uh, then we've got the Tech Marine, nothing, no big change there. Librarian in Terminator armor, regular chapter in Librarian in Phobos armor, uh, which of course we already know, that cool guy with the sword. Chaplain in Terminator armor, that great model that is really hard to find. Richard Cruz, what's up? Good to see you. And then we've got the Intercessor Squad. Now, um, the Intercessor Squads, uh, the big change to these guys was the Stalker Bolt Rifle. Mm -hmm. This is now... A strength 4, AP minus 2, damage 2 weapon. But on the first turn of the game, it's AP minus 3, 2 damage weapon. That is like having a strength Ridic 4 plasma gun Ridiculous. at the start of the game on your regular intercessor squads, guys. That is a big freaking difference. Um, obviously, uh, there is now an intercessor sergeant weapon list. Um, so let's just see exactly what you can give him. I suspect it's the same as before, but just in case there's a change, let's go and have a look. The intercessor sergeant weapon list. Oh, they've moved where the weapon is. Oh, back, I think. Great. Um, let's have a look. Hunting for this. I hate it when they move the book around, right? Then you're like, uh, uh, here we go. Oh, so they moved the armory to the back now, for those of you guys. Um, so the Incessor Sergeant, yeah, it's the same. You can give your Incessor Sergeant a Thunder Hammer. Yep. That's right, you heard me. Your Incessor Sergeant can have a Thunder Hammer. So Mitch is asking if this is White Scars. No, this is Space Marines. Yeah. They haven't even got to the White Scars and Ultramarines yet. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm just going to take a minute. You can give your Incessor Sergeant a Thunder Hammer. That's crazy. I'm going to give Incessor Sergeant Thunder Hammers all day. That's it. Hammer time. That's, that's crazy. I just discovered that. Wow. Okay, then you've got your Tactical Squad. Um, you know, the same thing, of course, uh, with the Tactical do Doctrine. They're AP minus one when you, when you move into that zone, which is really cool. Um, then you've got your Infiltrator Squads, which we had before. One of the big changes here is you can have an Infiltrator Comms Array instead of a Helix Adept. So you can either have the built-in... Mitch, no one cares about your WA today. No one cares about that WA. Uh, I'm joking. Um, so wow, what? The, the Infiltrator Comms Array enables um, your your infiltrator unit to gain the benefit of lieutenants and captains reroll rule, even if they're not next to them. So basically they can get their orders via the phone. You don't get the helix at it, but you do get the infiltrator comms array, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and points wise, let's just see how, that, how much that costs. I'm curious. The infiltrator comms array, um, where is that? So there's some points costs right here. Here we go, just hunting. Here we go, infiltrator comms array. It's 10 points. So, not too crazy. I think it's about the same as a Helix Adept. Guard for life. David Burnett, guard for life. 
Um, let us in on drop pods. John, drop pods are coming. I'm nearly there. I'm at the troop section. Scouts are about the same. There's no cursor, big difference cursor, here. Cursor. Oh, I've got incursors. That was a question. Incursors. So I that, don't know. Well yeah. done, yeah. The incursors, these are the new alternate infiltrators. So the main thing is they've got this Oculus Bolt Carbine instead of the Marksman Bolt Carbine. The profile is exactly the same, except instead of the when you roll a six, you automatically score a hit and wound. This one is the target doesn't receive the benefit of cover to its saving throw. So that's the big, the big difference there. But it also has paired combat blades. Uh, when you resolve an attack with this weapon, unmodified hit rolls of six scored an additional hit. Um, so not so bad, not so great. I'm not sure I feel about it. I kind of prefer just plus one extra attack naturally with a combat blade, I think, which uh, these guys don't have, but like in general, I think a chainsaw is better, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, Francesco, you are welcome. Um, they also have haywire mines. This is kind of cool. In your movement phase, one model from your army with a haywire mine that has not been primed can prime it. At any point during that model's move, put a haywire mine within one inch of it, more than three inches away from enemy models and more than six inches away from other mines. If an enemy unit moves within three inches of a mine, roll a dice. On a two up, they take D3 mortal wounds. If it's a vehicle, it's D3 plus one, and then remove it from play. This is really cool. Mines on the battlefield is brand new. Uh, Jared says, drop pods should be sick. Drop pods are sick. A white scars pod coming in turn three can get a massive charge range. Um, yeah, you are missing out. Drop pods don't need to be coming in uh, and doing that. Trust me, Jason. Drop pods are better. They're so much better. So much better. We'll talk about it. Um... And then uh, you've got the multi-spectrum array. This is pretty cool. When you resolve an attack with a ranged weapon by modeling this unit, ignore hit roll modifiers and ballistic skill modifiers. That is crazy as well. Um, and of course, they've got smoke grenades as well, uh, which is the same as the infiltrators. Once for that, instead of shooting, they can do that, and your opponent gets minus one to shoot. Um, so, um, then we have our scout squads. Um, you good there? Just yeah, yeah just make sure we did the same. Nice. Eve's watching. Hey, Eve, what's up? Necro, she's spying on us. Um, then we've got the Primaris Apothecary, the Apothecary, Primaris Ancient, Company Ancient, Company Champion, uh, Company Veterans, Company uh, Champions, kind of cool. No one really plays them anymore, but you've got Honor or Death. Um, if he can make a heroic intervention, he must do so, um, but he can go uh, within six inches instead of three. Um, and, uh, and yeah, pretty cool. He's got a combat shield built in. Martial Superiority. Uh, he, can, uh, he can fight first in the fight phase, even if he didn't charge. That's pretty good. Yep. Um, and then he's got Superlative Duelist. Resolving an attack with a melee weapon against the character, reroll hits and reroll wounds. It's pretty cool. Um, I think it might be the same as before, but whatever, I just thought it was cool. Uh, and you've got your Terminators, Terminator Assault, Cataphracti Terminator, Tartarus mm -hmm. Terminators, Vanguard Vets, which we all know and love, Stern Guard Vets. Stern Guard Vets can be really cool with that new doctrine. Um, so, uh, Jason, I hear what you're saying, man, but it's turn three. That's the issue. Uh, and we're going to talk about that. What you're saying isn't wrong. It does seem okay, but turn three, it's too late. It's going to be better. Um, Mitch says we're going to have a battle port with new rules. We absolutely are. We're building an army for it right now in the background. Hey, Dakota, come wave your hand. Show everyone that you're building an army right now. Where you at? Just come wave. Right here. There you go. Yo. We are at my house right now. Dakota's building an army. We've got the Ironclad Dreadnought, Vener Venerable Dreadnought, Contemptor Dread, Redemptor Dread, um, which uh, is pretty much the same as before. I don't think there's anything big, any big change there. Uh, but then we've got the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. This is that new um, lightweight Redemptor crossover with the power lifter from Aliens. Get away from her, you bitch! Um, the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. Strength 7, toughness 6, wounds 13, um, at 4 attacks. Um, hitting on 3s, same as always, movement 10. Um, the weapons it has, it's got the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher. Uh, that's that thing on the back of its head, as far as I can tell, which is D6, strength 4, nothing too crazy there. It's got a heavy bolter, which we all know and love, which it's got as its pistol. It can pull it up, um, and it, its pop bolter turns into a pistol when it's within one inch, which is, uh, awesome. which is pretty cool. Um, and then um, it has a uh, an incendium cannon, which is a 2d6 uh, flamethrower at strength 5 AP minus 1. So the incendium cannon is basically a, a double flamethrower, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can instead have a twin iron hail auto cannon, which is 6 shots at strength 7 AP minus one, two damage. So it's up to you which way you want to go with that. And it has two Iron Hail Heavy Stubbers as well, which is pretty cool. Um, they are like regular Heavy Stubbers. They've got three shots each. There's two of them, so six shots. Strength four, AP minus one. That's a lot of damage. And the Invicta Fist is a strength 14 attack because of times two. AP minus three or minus four. Remember, if we're in the Close Combat Doctrine, doing flat three damage. So this is a pretty beefy yeah. model. It's a hey, Stefan. six power level, which is actually... Remarkably cheap. If you compare that to the Redemptor, the Redemptor's seven, so it's uh, it's cheaper. I, I have to look yeah. at the points and see what that is. 
Um, okay, Richard. Richard. Oh, and of course, other special rules are concealed positions. Uh, you can set up on the board nine inches away. Um, if it's, uh, Richard wants to know the points cost of it. So let's have a look. For Richard Cruz, because we love you, Richard. Man, there's so much in this book. I'm, I'm speaking fast because I'm trying to get through it fast because there's a hell of a lot. And Richard's coming out this week. Oh, yeah, to War Games yeah. Con. Yeah. Hells yeah. Okay, so the Invicta Tactical Warsuit is 90 points compared to 105. So it's 15 points cheaper um, at its base level without all the war gear and stuff. So it's pretty cheap, guys. I think it's a startup infiltrating. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cheap. And, you know, you want it to be close, right? So yep. that's cool. And um, then we've got the Reaver Squad, which is the same as before, pretty much. That's what they do with the grab shoots. Um, you can drop them onto the board and the grapnel launcher. If every model in this unit is a grapnel launcher, I'm just wondering if they change the wording. During deployment, you can set it up behind enemy lines. If you do so at the end of one of your movement phases, um, you can set it up within six inches of any battlefield edge and nine from enemy models. Um, okay, cool. So it basically, it can outflank with the grapnel launcher as well. Mm -hmm. That's I don't know if that had that before. And then a model in this unit has a grapnel launcher when it moves your movement phase, not count vertical distance. So only in the movement phase, not count vertical distance. Um, Rich Cruz says that's spicy. It absolutely is. Aggressors are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, Centurions, uh, pretty much exactly the same. The Assault Squad. Bike Squad's the same. No big difference there as far as I can see. Um, so the, uh, does the plus one attack on charges stack with Space Wolf's ability? Um, it's a good question. As far as we know, yes, it absolutely does. There has not been anything to say otherwise. Suppressors. One of the things I was hoping with suppressors was you could take a bigger squad and you can't. There's still a flat three. Uh, it kind of sucks, but that's just how it is. Um, then there's the scout bike squad, same as always. Land speeders, attack bikes, that's the same. Devastator, Centurion Devastator. Uh, the Eliminator squad. The big change here is they now have strength five guns, not strength four guns, which is huge. Yeah. Um, and of course, they can target characters, which is great. Um, they got camo cloak, same as before. Guided aim. Um, instead of shooting, uh, the sergeant can guide his squad's aim until the end of that phase when you resolve an attack made with a ranged weapon, add one to the hit and wound roll. Uh, again, you can huge. only take three, but yeah, you can you can avoid one of them firing to let the other two um, add one to hit and wound, which is crazy when you've got strength five guns. Going to a strength six, like against the no, no, yeah, It's not strength like that? six. Oh. It's a common mistake. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus one to wound one to is wound, huge. Beca yeah, because strength yeah, yeah. five against toughness eight wounds on fives with plus right. one to wound, you wound on fours. Yeah, yeah, so it's a better. big difference. Um, so Jason says they haven't uh, they haven't released the rules and how it affects. Um, they said they're going to release an FAQ, but they also did confirm that all the factions do have it. So it will probably stack until the book comes out and says differently. Just uh, just so you know. Um, so the Hellblaster squad, no big change there. It's about the same. Thunderfire Cannon, Hunter, Stalker. I'm just letting you guys know what's in here in case you're worried something's missing. You got your Whirlwind. Um, no big difference there. Predator, Vindicator, Land Raider. Uh, we've got Last Land Raider, Crusader, Fusils. Land Raider, Redeemer. Laz Fusils. Uh, that's on the um, Executioner, I think. Right. The Laz Fusil, right? Mm, no, it's not. No. What's the Laz Fusil on, bud? Uh, Travis, let us know and we'll, we'll go find it for you. Um, so the Repulsor Executioner's there. Rhino, Razorback. One of the big questions I had, they got this new uh, transport, uh, the Impulsor, which is an assault vehicle. That means it, after the model moves in the movement phase, if it did not advance, units inside can disembark. I wondered if anything else had that rule. Nothing else has that rule. It's on Eliminators. Um, on the Eliminators, the Laz Fusils. Um, so going to the Eliminators. Um, eliminators, yep, Laz Fusils, absolutely. Um, Strength 8. So, uh, yep, the Sergeant or any of the people can have a Laz Fusil instead. A Laz Fusil is heavy one, strength eight, AP minus three, three damage, 36 inch range. So it's basically like a long range Laz cannon mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it's pretty good actually. I can see people using those. Um, I think I prefer the regular ones because of the plus one to wound. But then again, plus one to wound on strength eight could be fun too. Yeah. So yeah. So no, it's pretty good. Maybe maybe Laz Fusils are cool. I'm not sure. Uh, the Laz Fusils can't target characters though. So I'm worth thinking about. Um, all right. We are now at... Uh, one of my favorite sections, which is the drop pod. The drop pod has a new special rule, and this is very important. This is the big reveal. This is the one. In matched play, this model and units embarked upon it are exempt from tactical reserves match play rule. That means drop pods can now arrive on the first turn of the game. That means if you slap some heavy weapon guys inside your drop pod, they arrive on the first turn. Not only can they arrive on the first turn, fire on the first turn, but they're going to get an additional AP minus one. I love that. Steel rain. Steel rain. Steel rain, yes. <laughs> Took a while to work it out. Steel rain. Yep, it's back. 
the I mean it basically means from a fluff point of view space marines now play the way you want them to in the first turn They do a ton of heavy weapon fire they get benefits from it They can drop a soul in um, and they can do some epic things. They can also charge once they land which is crazy Yeah mm -hmm. Ryan Kelly drop pods. I love that Ryan Kelly pretends like he cares about drop pods um, <laughs> But yeah, it's epic. It's absolutely yes. epic, guys. So um, so they can land, they can charge, they can shoot, they can do the full-on nasty, brutal thing that you want your Space Marines to do on the first turn, um, and then as it goes forward. So that tactic that I think Jason was talking about, you have to wait for turn three, man. Do it on turn one. Turn like, one, I'm drop like, them in, and annihilate you people. I'm like thinking like, you know, drop pod, come down, heavy weapons team, and you got White Scar's bikes coming up right behind it it's like what do you do oh yeah devastator squad or a bike squad coming at me one of the things i used to do back in seventh edition was i would drop three drop pods with three squads of melters in mm -hmm. them um as uh, as wolf guard and then just completely crush people with melter fire because you have 15 melter shots yeah. in your face. um uh brian says i wish they could be six inches away too you don't need the six inches man nine's absolutely fine yeah absolutely fine to do the damage that you want um mitch they definitely finally made it worth playing um six inch away would be absolutely absurd i agree um, so the new Impulsor, it's Toughness 7, Wounds 11, um, nothing too special about it. Um, the weapons it's got, it has two Storm Bolters. Um, you can give it an Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, which is that, you know, minus one AP Heavy Stubber. Um, you can replace the Storm Bolters with Frag Storms, but you can also give it either a Shield Dome, an Orbital Comms Array, or a Bellicatus Missile Array, or an Iron Hail Sky Talon Array. Let's discuss what all those are. The shield dome gives it a four up and vulnerable save. That's pretty crazy. So here's a question. Can Wolfen go in the pod? Is there any restrictions on the pod about what type of troops can go in it? Uh, Wolfen can go in a pod as far as I'm yeah. aware. There's nothing that says they can't. Um, so yeah, so that's absolutely huge. Um, so uh, the uh, the shield dome gives four up and vulnerable save. The orbital comms array. In your shooting phase, one model from your army with an orbital comms array that has not been used can do an orbital barrage. So basically it lets you use the orbital barrage without spending command points. Um... And, uh, but you can use it once per game. Um, or you can give it the Iron Hail Sky Talon Array, which is a strength, uh, heavy six, strength four, AP minus one, plus one to hit against flyers, minus one to hit against non flyers. Um, or you've got the Pelicartus Missile Array. This one's pretty cool. It's either D3, strength seven. It's kind of like the one that's on the uh, Onager from uh, Admech. Um, oh, uh, yes, it would have to be a Space Wolf Pod, Richard, you're right. Um, so it's either D3 strength 7 AP minus 1 D3 damage, plus 1 to hit against flyers or minus 1 to hit, or D6 strength 4, which is frag, or 1 strength 8 AP minus 2 D6. What's the capacity on the uh, uh, You can put 6 pod. Primaris inside. It cannot teleport Gravis. So that means you can't put your aggressors in there. Right. Uh, but that's huge, because I wanted to put 3 aggressors in one. Um, so the transport pod only holds 6 Primaris Marines. Um, then there's the Stormhawk Interceptor. Storm Raven, Storm Talon, same old, same old. Um, big changes are that sergeants are allowed to carry Thunderhammers. That's mm -hmm. huge. In in Intercessors and in Tactical Marines. In fact, it's just a sergeant weapon. Uh, sergeant weapon. Only Stern Guard Vet sergeants cannot. Um, so that's pretty crazy, guys, the amount of Thunderhammers um, that you can now have everywhere. Um, Thunderhammer is a melee weapon, a sergeant weapon, an Intercessor sergeant weapon. Um, so that's pretty huge. Um, I heard that they increased the points cost of Thunderhammers to characters, though. So we'll talk about yes, that. Yes, they did. Um, Jason Collins says, what's the drop pod? Oh, the drop pod holds 10, as far as I'm aware. Uh, let me just double check that for you. Uh, it can hold 10 infantry models. It cannot transport jump pack, terminator, premier resource, centurions. Okay, a um, couple of clarifications they did that I like. Uh, bolt, flame, and melter weapons. They confirmed that Dawn's Arrow, the Gauntlets of Ultramar, Gorgon's Wrath and Quietus are all bolt weapons. That's huge. Um, they also confirmed that the Gaunt of the Forge and Drakis um, are flame weapons. Um, so, you know, that's that's pretty big. That means that the weapons that were bolt weapons before are officially bolt weapons. So they get all the benefits. Um, so now as we go through, we get into some of the cool stuff, which is the chapter tactics. So first of all, uh, obviously, um, you've got the regular troops of troops, which is cool. The chapter tactics, they already summarized for GW, um, so I'm not going to go through them all here. Uh, they're, they're up. We've put them up um, on one of our pages as well. Yep. Um, the big thing is Imperial Fists and it's Crimson Fists post, both have a standard rule that an unmodified hit roll of a six scores an additional hit. Um, the big difference is that Crimson Fists get plus one to hit um, if they sh attack a model that has at least five more models than the model's unit. Uh, that's huge. It used to be double. Now it's five more. That makes a big difference. Um, and the Imperial Fists, um, the targets don't get the benefits of cover. So that's the... And the score. 
No, six. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had that already. Yeah, 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 they both got that. So that's pretty huge. Um, all of the chapter tactics kind of improved a bit. They've got like extra stuff. Uh, the white scars chapter tactic um, is that um, uh, all white scars can charge in a turn when they advance or fall back. And biker models don't get the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons or for advancing and firing an assault weapon. Both those things are pretty huge. Um, on top of that, um, uh, these guys have their, their like special rules, but all chapter tactics now apply to all models. It's not just infantry anymore in Dreadnoughts. It's all vehicles, so that's pretty huge as well. That means your ultramarines can remove, uh, get out of fire and shoot. Uh, Travis likes the Iron Hands tactic. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, whenever you lose a wound on a 6-up, it's not lost. Uh, Overwatch is on a 5 or a 6. Um, and um, the damage table of vehicles, uh, you double the amount remaining when you work out what row to use for damage. Then they've got these successor chapter tactics, and there are loads. The way it works is really simple. Um, if you do not choose to take one of the other chapter tactics, um, then you can pick uh, two from this list instead. So it's up to you which one you do. You either get, uh, you either get one of these ones, um, or you can have two of these special ones. And these are essentially um, versions of everything else. I'm going to whiz through them and show you what you can get. So, um, uh, I, I'll read them out very fast. Bolts of fusillades, uh, bolt weapons, reroll hit rolls of one. Born heroes, characters can heroic intervention six inches. Duelists, um, melee weapons on, uh, uh, with this tactic against infantry and biker on six automatically score a hit and automatically wound. Uh, you can't take that with Whirlwind of Rage, worth noting. Fearsome Aspect, subtract one from enemy leadership, they're within three inches. Hungry for Battle, when a unit uh, tactic advances or makes a charge, add one to the advance or charge roll. So that's pretty cool. For those of you guys that are worried about the distance, that's pretty huge. Um, Indomitable, um, no more than one model ever flees. Inheritors of the Primarch, um, if you pick this one, you cannot have a second. Pick one of the following chapters and use the chapter tactic of that chapter as listed. So that's the, you can use one of the others. So it's Ultramarine, Imperial Fist, White Scar, Raven Guard, Salamander, Iron Hands. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. It says, uh, if in the background of our publications, your chapter is a known successor of a specific first founding chapter, um, for example, the Storm Lords are from the White Scars, then you have to t pick the chapter's tactic of the first founding chapter instead. So that's oh, pretty that's cool. Yeah, so yeah. you can't just like rename it whatever you want. Uh, knowledge is power. When a psychic test or deny the witch test is taken for a psyker, reroll ones. Pretty cool. Uh, long range marksman. Add three inches to the range characteristic of ranged weapons. Master artisans. Uh, when it fires Overwatch or is choosing to shoot or fight, reroll a single hit roll and a single wound roll. Um, preferred enemy. When you select this tactic, select one of the following faction keywords. Um, and whenever you attack one of those, it's a Xenos basically. Uh, when you, whenever you attack them, uh, whenever you make a charge move, you um, or or our charge, you can reroll hits. Pretty cool, close combat. Rapid assault. Uh, do not suffer the penalty for advancing and firing assault weapons. Silence of the Forge. Um, you have the the double wounds on vehicles. So basically, when you yeah. work out what this is the same as the Iron Hands one. Uh, si uh, Stalwart. When resolving an attack made against the unit of this tactic, ones and twos to wound always fail. It's pretty interesting. Uh, stealthy. Uh, this is um, a model that is over 12 inches away, counts as being in cover. Stoic, plus one leadership. Um, tactical withdrawal, you can charge in a turn where you fall back. That's pretty good. That's huge. Um, uh, warded, uh, whenever you take a mortal wound on a five up, it's not lost. So it's five up against mortal yeah. wounds. Um, a whirlwind of rage, uh, when, you with, when a model with this, uh, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in this tactic, um, when they charge or are charged, uh, six is for extra hits, but you can't use that with duelists. What vehicles can Sergeant Kronos crew? Okay, good question. Sergeant Kronos. Um, bum, bum, bum. Saw him a minute ago. Oh, he's in the Ultramarines book. Hold yeah, tight, yeah. I'll get you there. I'll get you there. We'll get there. Um, okay, so uh, Warlord traits. There are Space Marine Warlord traits and there are Vanguard Warlord traits. Um, it says, if a Space Marine... Phobos character is your warlord. You can choose which table you use. So that's cool. You can, you can if you've got a Phobos, take the old uh, warlord traits. Um, and these all look to be about the same as they were before. I think there's nothing too crazy there. Good question here. Uh, you answered it earlier, but can the supplement stand on its own or do you need... The, no, uh, you, you have, have to have both. both. The new supplements do not help you. In fact, the White Scars one is really light on rules, just for you to know. It's important if you play White Scars and you want the characters and the stratagems and the powers, but it is light on rules. There are so many stratagems. Oh my gosh. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and pick out the new ones, like the ones that are, aren't there for more. So Armor of Contempt, 5 up for Mortal Wounds, all spec scan is the same. 
Suppression fire, this is on a whirlwind. Um, it can fire twice, basically. Only death does duty end. It's two command points. Uh, I think that's the same. Chapter master, this is huge. It doesn't say reroll failed hit rolls anymore. It now says reroll hit rolls. That means that weird thing where if you have minus one to hit, they're removed and they don't count, that's gone. You just reroll hit rolls. So it's the same as Baden. It looks like they've changed it and it's very easy. Um, that's great. I love that. Death to the Traitors basically gives you um, the uh, the rule that the Heretic Astartes has. We pay one right. command point. Every time you roll a six, you can make an extra attack. Um, honor the chapter. Um, three command points. They can fight again. That's the same. Uh, Duty Eternal. This is on Dreadnought. This one's pretty cool. Um, for uh, uh, when someone... When someone chooses to attack your Dreadnought, it's one command point. Until the end of the phase, half the damage. I love that one. I think that's really great. Flak Missile, same. Veteran Intercessors, it's in here. If it's five models or less, it's one command point. If it's more, it's two command points. Plus one attack, plus one leadership. Um, and uh, you can only do this once per Intercessor squad. So that's cool, because you can basically have a whole squad of Vets now. Um, so that was the Vigilist thing, and they just added it. Fight twice, uh, right? Yes, Jason, uh, yes, uh, fight twice affects everything, not just infantry and bikes. Or is that one of the chapters? Yes, it's any Adeptus Astartes. Um, uh, bolt Storm, this is pretty cool. It's for an Intercessor squad. Um, auto Bolt Rifles um, gain the following ability. Um, if somebody is within half range, it automatically scores a hit. That's pretty cool for the Auto Bolt Rifles. Um, Hunter Slayer Missile is on the Repulsor. Um, this enables it to do D3 Mortal Wounds instead for one command point. It's pretty cool. Cluster Mines on the Scout Bikes is the same. Gravity amplification I like. Um, this is uh, until the end of the phase. If you uh, a unit firing with grav cannons and grav amps can reroll failed wounds, uh, reroll wounds, and can reroll the damage roll. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, rapid fire on an intercessor squad. Bolt rifles uh, switch to rapid fire too. Uh, so these are basically the vigilance rules, but they're now in the uh, main book. Uh, yes, you can double fight with a uh, dread librarian, Jason. Spot on. I was just looking here in the Overwatch one here. Yeah, but that's from before. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. before. Okay, so, um, sure. so then uh, Hammer of Wrath, which is the same. Mm -hmm. Big guns never tire. Um, they don't get the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. That's one command point. Fear of the First. Um, this is uh, it's pretty cool. It's a Terminator rule. Until the end of the phase, um, when resolving an attack made by a model and unit, add one to hit. So that's pretty nice. So that, that's one. a question for you. Terminators have been like kind of defunct this mm -hmm. past all of 8th edition, right? Have they made Terminators where they're going to be able to be used again and be effective with combi weapons and all that stuff? I mean, yeah, I think the combi weapons are pretty cool. I don't know if it's made enough of a difference. Your incestors are just like... Because I know you have like the plasma bomb, combi plasmas, you know, with chaos. Yeah, I just... No, I think I think the incestors are just better. So still, just still just flat yeah, out better. I, I mean, yeah, we can yeah. have a look at the points cost and see if they've dropped them. But like, there's nothing really... There's nothing really changed here, okay. yeah. Yeah, there's nothing really... Because I know that's going to be a question that people are going to have. Yeah, I don't think there's anything crazy here. You know, the Crat of Fracti Terminators are pretty good because you've got the 4-up and Vulnerable save. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, like, no, they're all pretty pretty standard. Nothing too special. Yep. Um, okay. Um, target Sighted. This enables Intercessor squads with the Stalker Bolt Rifles to target characters, uh, which is pretty good. Um, uh, steady Advance. Um, for Bolter Discipline, it counts as if they stayed still even if they move. That's pretty good. That means full range shooting twice. Um, Richard will go over the prayers in a second. Yeah. Um, one command point for that one. Uh, skilled riders, this is really good. I love this one. Two command points. Your bikers have a four up and vulnerable save if they moved, or three up if they advanced. I absolutely love that. That also affects land speeders. Here of the chapter is pretty cool. Um, pick a, a character that, that is not your warlord, and they get a warlord trait. I really like that one. Uh, transhuman physiology. Uh, when resolving an attack, wound rolls of one, two, or three fail against the depths of the starters units. That's pretty good, especially when you know someone's firing against your regular infantry. Uh, Vengeance of the Machine Spirit. Um, you can either force it to explode or it can fire one more time as it dies. That's pretty good. Um, uh, adaptive Strategy. This is great. Remember about the doctrines that you start devastating and go down? This is one command point, and um, uh, what, uh, as long as there is a character on the battlefield, then you can switch to... Um, you can switch back up one. So if you're an assault, you can go to tactical, or if you're a tactical, you can go to devastator. That's pretty I think good. That's huge. Uh, yep. And then a gene rope might when a Primaris infantry unit fights. Um, when fight with melee weapons, sixes score an extra hit, um, and automate uh, and successfully wound. Don't make the roll. It's pretty wow. good. Um, then we go to chapter relics. There is a ton of uh, of relics. Uh, there's a whole bunch of new ones. Um, I'll talk about things that I think might be uh, might be interesting. Uh, let's have a look here. 
Uh, the Armour Indomitus, this is for an infantry or biker. They have a two-up save, and once per battle, they can have a three-up and vulnerable save. Um, uh, see, a lot of these are, are basically weapons. Uh, the Primarch's Wrath, which we now know is officially a bolt gun. Uh, mm -hmm. That's rapid fire, two strength five, AP minus one, two damage. Um, uh, you can increase the range of their models by three inches. I mean, you know, I think with Chapter Relics, most people are going to be taking them from the supplement books. Yeah. Um, Mitch says, I think the new bottle is a little bit overpowered. Um, it might be. I mean, they're really powerful. Uh, then we've got the disciplines. Let's move on. We'll do the litanies of battle. So these are the chaplain's rules. First of all, litanies of faith. Um, uh, a friendly unit in six inches loses a wound on a five up. That wound is not lost. Um, this is not cumulative with other rules. Uh, Catechism of fire. Uh, pick one unit within six inches when resolving attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in that unit. Uh, add one to the wound roll. It's pretty good. And it doesn't say it's not stackable. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, there's some pretty cool, some pretty cool things about that. Uh, Exhortation of rage. Uh, pick a friendly model within six inches when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a mod in that unit. Uh, unmodified hit rolls of six uh, create an additional attack against the same uh, with the same weapon. So it's basically, uh, you know, the same thing the Imperial Fists have. It's pretty cool. Uh, actually, it doesn't say that doesn't stack either, so that could be crazy. Yeah, it could be very crazy, I think. Um, it does say that you can't, the attacks can't generate extra attacks, but uh, actually, why? No, it wouldn't stack. There would be no need for that. Oh, no, yeah. it would trigger both, I suppose. It would trigger both. The six would trigger both. That's yeah. crazy. Mantra of strength, add one to the model's attacks, strength, and one to damage their melee weapons. That's pretty good. When do you do these prayers? Uh, these are chaplain prayers. So uh, you do it when the chaplain chooses to, to do its litany, and the chaplain does its litany. Um, at the start of the battle round so yep. you do it each battle round uh, recitation of focus uh, pick one model within six inches when resolving an attack with a ranged weapon add one to hit pretty good and canticles of hate um, add two to charge rolls um, in addition when it makes a pine or consolidate move within six inches uh, models can move an additional three inches so it's pretty good uh, points values there's been a lot of points changes um, drop pods are dropped by a two points um, the captain in Phobos armor dropped by 20 points. Um, if anyone's got questions about points, I'm more than happy to help. Do, um, Do chaplains have models that help its prayers like a Dark Apostle does? I haven't seen anything like yeah. that. I was looking and didn't see it. Um, so it doesn't look like it. It looks like they just trigger on a three up. There might be a relic maybe. Uh, I'm not sure, but it feels like a relic would be the right thing. Um, I... No, there is an item, the Benediction of Fury. It replaces the Criseris Arcanum, but it doesn't really do it. No, it doesn't look like there's any way to do that, guys. Not that I can see, anyway. Um, and then you've got your two disciplines. Uh, any questions on points values, I'm more than happy to answer. But now I'm going to move on to... Oh, we got to no, there's one that we have to discuss. The Thunderhammer. Oh, yeah, the Thunderhammer. So Thunderhammer for characters are now 40 points, or 16 for sergeants. So big change there. Um, so that's that one. Um, and then we can move on to the other books. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off this video. And I'm going to create a new one for people that just want to see the others in case you don't care about each of them. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned in Game Talk because we're about to do the Codex Ultramarine uh, video.